as pet owners, I think some items are very vital to have. So we're calling this our pet owner, cat owner survival kit. It's not really a kit, it's more of a collection of items. That we found make life much easier when you have cats. Or pets in general. You you can do number one seeing as it's your Number one your baby. is my, my personal baby. So number one, what I would recommend everybody get is a good vacuum cleaner. Cats shed, uh, cats will, if they go outside, will drag in whatever items you have in your garden, dust, uh, grass, leaves. Um, so vacuuming is a big part of our life and that way having a good vacuum cleaner will make your life a lot easier. So we had different types of vacuums over the years and then I think about two years ago, three years ago, did the research and the Dyson vacuum cleaners which are on the expensive side came out as like with flying colors and flying reviews on, on the internet. And they've and it's been a lifesaver ever since. I mean especially for our small little cottage having a wireless vacuum cleaner is actually absolutely amazing and essential. Yeah, so we have the V7, which is an older model, but um, it's handheld, it comes with different attachments, it's been absolutely fantastic, it's super easy to load. We attach the loading base uh, into our uh, broom closet, so we don't even see it like on a day-to-day -day basis, even though it is a pretty vacuum cleaner, so you could have it out on a wall as well. But it's ready to go, you just grab it, you clean up, yeah, you can do fine, you can do big, you can, and it's really, really great for, for pet hair and it's, you don't need to touch anything, there's no bags, so you just empty the container. It is on the expensive side, but I don't, it's probably the one item in my household when it comes to cleaning and so on that I will never regret having spent that kind of money. It's fantastic. There we go, number one, a good vacuum cleaner. Number two, sticking with the cleaning and the cat hair is a good lint roller. If you ever have cats, we have white and black cats, and if you have any kind of clothes, hope you do, <laughs> their fur will get on it no matter what. I mean, we pull our clothes out of the washing machine sometimes and there's already fur on it. So a good lint roller is essential. And you'll you never look. get all of the hair off either. You'll still be covered in hair, but you can limit the amount by having a lint roller. Like, I'll, before going to work or meeting with clients, I'll quickly give myself a once over to kind of not look like I just hugged Momo just before I left, which I usually do. So that's definitely a, a big one as well. And we get the, I know you get reuse, reusable ones if you can just wash. Uh, we have the old fashioned one with just the sticky paper. Which are a little bit less eco-friendly, but- It is biodegradable if paper. You get, if you get really good washable ones, I, sus I, I suggest going with those, but of course- I mean, either all, way, it's paper. We live in South Africa, we don't get these fancy things here. This and is it is still paper, so it's not the worst yeah. like eco-disaster if you have the normal paper ones. And I actually find that the paper one is like it's really, much more really good. Yeah. It's very effective. Right, number three is basic vet supplies. Go this ahead. we've kind of gathered over the years. It's not something that we really went and bought as a set or something. It's, it's also not like, I don't mean vet supplies as in like have medications or keep medications. Yeah. Any of the medications that we have is leftovers from when one of the other cats had right. something. And otherwise, all I mean by basic vet supplies, it's basically we keep a good disinfectant that was recommended by the vet so that if there's open wounds just from scratches and so on, because they do tumble and, and, and play every now and then, just to keep the wounds clean. Obviously, we have dewormer in the house because that's something that needs to be done regularly. Um, Anti-hairball. Anti-hairball uh, jelly. We have flea and tick treatment if need be. And the, the disinfectant that we use is F10. It's the typical vet smell. <laughs> Anyone that's been, been to a vet will recognize it immediately. Yeah, so we have two disinfectants. We have the disinfectant for surfaces, which is the F10, and then we have, it's a pink solution. I'm, what is it called? Do I'll we throw have the name on the, on the screen. It's, it's like a luckily, pink solution that you can then use on wounds and so yeah, on. And luckily here we can order it online. You can yeah. order it online. I, I don't know how it is in other countries, but luckily we are Because it's to. not a medication. Yeah. It's just a disinfectant. And some medications we are also allowed to order, but yeah. it also depends. Obviously nothing hectic. And then uh, I think the last that I would say is also have iodine or sa um, saline? How do you pronounce saline. it? Saline. It's basically a salt water solution. Yeah, so you can get that at your local pharmacy. It's not, like you can use it on, on humans and on, on animals, which is great so that if um, he cuts himself, I cut myself, it can also be used to clean wounds and it's just a great all around to have in the house as an alternative disinfectant solution. And then before we hop on to number four, please 
remember to hit that like button it really helps the algorithm and bump the video up and helps us as a channel and remember to subscribe as well and share with all of your friends so we can keep bringing you these videos which you hopefully enjoy then number four and I think we're gonna do a separate video just on this and that is pet insurance it has been especially after if you follow us on Instagram you'll know we unfortunately had lost one of the cats not ours but my mom's, my, my mom's. and the pet insurance was a big help just to get some of that money back that was spent. Unfortunately was spent. Um, and I mean, we've mentioned it in other videos. Um, it's just something that puts the mind at ease. Uh, we noticed yesterday that Momo has a little lump that we're keeping an eye on. Obviously, vets are closed on the weekend, so we're going to wait until Monday, see if it might just be a bug bite, then it will be gone by Monday. If it isn't, then he'll need to go in. And the great thing is we know we don't need to worry. If he needs to go to the vet, he needs to go to the vet. We will pay up front and the money will be sent back to us no matter what he has. Yes, so Momo. That's just <laughs> we call him lumpy not it's a tiny little lump but we just want to be safe and it does feel a little small already today so i'm wondering if he just he was very like subdued yesterday as well so i'm wondering if he just got into trouble with um, a bee or a wasp, a wasp or, something. or something like that he does like to hunt insects so it's very possible it is but very yeah possible. we highly highly recommend pet insurance it doesn't cost a lot and i think at the end of the day it really is worth it yeah just put your mind at ease. Unfortunately, you can't, Not a lot of pet insurances won't allow you to insure all the pets. So that's why Alice and Maya aren't, and Kevy aren't under insurance, because they're just unfortunately all too old. They were too old when we started. Yeah, so you can, like I explained in the other video, I think, you can insure, like Momo will be insured his entire life. Yeah. But you can't start the insurance when they're past, I think, eight years old in South Africa. And unfortunately, the girls, when we actually started looking into insurances, uh, were already over eight, so we couldn't register them. Then something that we encourage is for you to store your toys that for the cats in a specific little box or something so that they're not lying around and the cats can't get hurt or anything with for, by the toys so we have a little tupperware it's not actually tupperware it's a little plastic container that we put all the toys in and we chuck catnip over it and then basically it marinates the toys in catnip and, and it's also it, it allows the rotation of toys so that they're yeah. not lying around all the time not being played with it keeps them them entertained and certain toys especially toys with strings and so on you shouldn't actually leave around for your cat to chew on when they're unsupervised because they could theoretically choke or eat the the string and that can cause obstructions and so on and so forth yeah so this is an easy one a little plastic box catnip something that mice and stuff something, something, that, something closes that seals nicely. properly yeah. <laughs> we used to have them in like ziploc bags but i find a nice little plastic box is just a lot nicer Next is food storage. Um, so when we were feeding dry food, um, I think a lot of people will be able to say that their pets have probably done the same thing. When we used to, to do that, um, the cats would regularly, they knew which cupboard the food packets were in. They would manage to open that cupboard door and choose through the packet and serve themselves. So when that happened, we eventually bought another plastic container um, to keep the food in that sealed and locked properly so that even if they could get into the pantry, they could just throw that box around and not get into the packets because KB specifically is was notorious. If we just left that packet out for like five minutes while we fetched the rest of the groceries out of the car. Yeah, now we used to have a little Tupperware, actually Tupperware brand, yes. <laughs> container that we put the raw food in. But now with a different brand that we're going with, they come in these neat little containers that's much easier. Keep them in the microwave, they defrost over the day, and then after that they can go in the fridge without being in a different box or anything. Yep. Really convenient. So great thanks to Vet. Simply, 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 simply pets. pets. That supplies that food, they're really fantastic. The then next one. The last one is very focused at raw feeders. Raw food feeders. Basically, <laughs> If you're really dedicated to raw feeding, you're gonna need an extra fridge or an extra space in your freezer, freezer specifically, not the fridge, but in your freezer to keep all the raw food. And if, if you prepare the meals yourself, you'll need um, containers and stuff for the raw food. I think if, you, if you're if you going as far as and a lot of people do, and we might look into it in the future as well, if you pre prep your own meals, like you proper buy the meat and you yourself then portion it out, portion and, it out and so on, I would highly advise getting a chest freezer because I think you will never in your own freezer manage to, to store all of that meat correctly and get, have access to it and so on or have your own food in the freezer. Yeah, at the moment we managed to get away with it because they come in pre-packaged, pre-prepared meals that... 
and because we specifically only do two weeks at a time if we ever needed or wanted to do a full month I think we would have to sacrifice our entire freezer to cat food which obviously we can't because we also have our own food so we will probably eventually maybe even look into a little chest freezer to keep somewhere just for cat food and then we might try if, if that happens we might try our own mix basically instead of buying pre-mixed portions which we would love to do I'd love to try it and experiment around with it and see what the cats like I found with not with this brand Ryu is a lot more picky he doesn't like the seafood that much he's getting better but it's interesting I think to texture, see what they, the texture the yeah. texture threw him off at first because it's ground much much finer and I think he was very confused about it at first and he very much dislikes the fishy one which is weird because most cats love fish but if you'd love for us to show you how we prep our food leave us a comment and we'll we'll make that video as well <laughs> anyways that's our little survival kit our ensemble of mm. items what would you say what items yes. do you have at home that you think are indispensable to having when you have a cat at home or a dog and let us know down below and then please again like the video share it it really helps it get in the algorithm and get shared around and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one cheers bye